Hi there. Um, been operating this uh, CNC machine now for about two years. Uh, and it's an appropriate time to give a review on it after using it for so long and getting to understand what it can and can't do. Um, this was um, a machine we bought off uh, eBay UK site uh, back in, well, it was about March 2020. Uh, probably right a bit after that, but uh, that was roughly on the order there. Um, I thought it's, you know, a lot of people sort of uh, unsure about these machines or uh, there's not a great deal of feedback about them on the internet. There's certainly not a great deal of information uh, on YouTube of people using them, etc. So uh, I thought it only fair um, to give my opinion uh, and experience. I must point out that there are several vendors of similar products. This is just one from one vendor. I'm not going to put a specific link in. Um, I will put an image from the listing up, but the uh, you know people still need to do their own research when they're, they're buying machines. But obviously, if you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask in the comments below. Uh, it's a steel frame CNC with a 2.2 kilowatt uh, water cooled Chinese spindle, 34 uh, stepper motors, uh, plenty powerful for the size. Um, Possibly too powerful for its size, but hey, I'm not rocking it. Um, it's a good solid construction. Would have liked it a bit heavier uh, in weight when it's you know in situ. Um, I may have to add some weights to it in the future. Uh, but for the most of the stuff we cut out, it's only when we cut out intricate stuff and the uh, X and Y's moving uh, quite rapidly in short distances, uh, it sort of bounces around a bit. Then uh, it's never affected the quality of the cut. It, you know, but you know, I can see at some point it may well do, so it's just something that's been heard. Um, so let's talk about the machine. <clears throat> the machine as it arrived, uh, opinions from there, on, and what we've done to it uh, since we've we've been using it. Um, we've been cutting aluminium on it from the start, so and very very rapidly as well. I hasten to add, we've been dry cutting uh, 1050 aluminium, which everyone tells you don't do, um, and we've had no bother. The knack with the CNC is buy the right bits. If you just buy the CNC and hope that any old random bit off uh, the internet is going to work, you're in for a, a, you know, a, a sad result. You've got to research and buy quality bits and that can make a whole difference to the, to the world of cut that you get. Um, we invested in some uh, superior coated products. I'll put a link in below. There's no commission on that from us. It's just where we buy them from in the UK. Uh, they're extremely good value and they enable you to cut stuff like plastic and uh, you know, cut acrylic with a mirror finish edge very easily. <clears throat> uh, you can uh, cut 1050 aluminium at high speed, you know, up to 2000 millimeters per second, um, which is uh, fairly rapidly, uh, sorry, 2000 millimeters per minute. Um, so yeah, it's all, all good in that regard. Um, but let's talk about the machine itself anyway. So. One of the things uh, we noted when, we, when it arrived was it was wedged in the back of a van, which was a bit concerning because it was at a jaunty angle. Uh, I was concerned that it may have knocked it out of square, etc., but it didn't appear to be. It was just very badly thought through on the courier service that the company used. I suspect it was a mate with a van who did it cheap. Um, the other thing that we noticed straight away was some of the bolts were missing on the support rails. So we've uh, tapped and added them. I think every other one uh, kind of thing was missing. I've not done them all because I really needed to get a longer tap. I never, never got around to actually getting a longer tap. I struggled to replace <coughs> uh, the ones I did replace with a short tap. Um, because of the raised bar, it's, we can't quite get in. So. Uh, I need to eventually get a longer one and finish those off. There's only a few more to do, but that was, you know, there's a reason why the holes are there. They need bolts in. Um, as I say, it's never been an issue, but you know, the more bolts, the better it is. Um, the other problem we had with it uh, when it arrived was there was some rubbing on the side rails, uh, down with the, the guard that goes down there on that side. Um, We've added some spacers to it, including the plastic shim. Uh, that was the only way to get it <clears throat> to stop rubbing. You know, that was a bad fit from the start. 
and the only other issue we've really had with it is uh, we blew a VFD uh, because when we were cutting the aluminium the VFD mount <coughs> that came was originally down here sorry sorry knocking the camera underneath is mounted in two bolts here on a plate uh, that was fine so we thought I even put a, a plate over the top of it to try and uh, protect uh, and shield it from any of the chips that were flying around it didn't work uh, and eventually it's the aluminium chips did short it out so that was an expensive day uh, <clears throat> so we've replaced the BFD uh, annoyingly the one I've replaced it with it uh, doesn't read out in RPM it does a percentage so you've kind of got to guess um, what setting you're on and just kind of work it out from there but you can normally hear it when the bits hitting the material if you're high or low so it's not really a major problem but we made a frame which we bolted on uh, and then welded on at the side which you can see goes up and also holds <coughs> uh, the vacuum tubes which we later added uh, which allows it to swing around uh, and a light of course hook for the uh, control etc so that was just a little feature that we added so other than that um, the machine has been fine and say it's very strong oh no there was one other thing uh, the control cabinet didn't have a key no key and despite repeated uh, efforts to get one from the vendor he kept promising to send one the post one never materialized um, well <clears throat> not been an issue because we started making cabinets for people um, for various things and needed to put locks on them so we had to get loads of keys at one point uh, and we've got the key to set the matching lock so we've got our own keys and seats. But these things you'll be aware of, and it's you know it's a small gremlin. Um, but you know if you if you're doing CNC CNC stuff, then you'd be problem solving all day every day. So you know you've just got to work through it uh, and find the solution. Um, uh, it's a pain, yeah, but that's all it was, just a minor irritation. Um, in terms of cutting, the machine has been highly accurate. Uh, as I say we've done uh, repeat cuts. We were literally uh, putting sheet after sheet after sheet through. Um, without any issues at all. The only issues were if I had not loaded it properly, um, not checked it properly, it might come, sometimes move on, not turn the vacuum on, you know, the, um, the sheet might move. So it's all operator errors rather than uh, machine errors. Uh, it will, like any other machine, lose steps, things like, you know, sometimes a hissy fit. Um, again, it's usually by an operator error, something I've done, um, but you know, they are, um, prone to user uh, problems like any machine. Um, now then some of the other upgrades we've added, we've put in the um, blower in there because we were doing the aluminium, aluminium chips, I wanted to make sure the bit stayed cool so I put a small blower in. It's not a compressor blower as in, you know, shop presser with all these uh, CFM's going through it. It's a, I think it's used for uh, airbrushing. It's a very low powered, doing a constant flow. But that's all I wanted to do was make sure the chips were moving because these vacuums on these shoes are better than useless to be perfectly honest. They never work. Uh, so it probably only picks about 40% of the chips uh, that are coming off at any one time. So you end up with a big pile of chips. I just wanted to make sure they were blowing clear of the, uh, the bit. Uh, that worked fine. Obviously we put a vacuum onto it. We've installed a vacuum bed as well. Uh, it's a very simple setup. Um, we've got a 1.5 kilowatt uh, blower unit underneath, which supposed to be was 240 volts, but it kept flipping the switch, 240 volts, it would never fire up. Turns out to run it on 240 volts, you need a VFD, but being Chinese and being garbled instructions, it didn't say that. So I really, I should have added another CFD uh, and that would have fixed that problem. Uh, the easy fix for me was the electrician got a unit next door, he came in and wired it up to phase three. Off you go, it's worked perfectly. Um, maybe in future I'll put it back on a 240 volt VFT, I don't know, but at the minute it works fine. Uh, we've added in these side panels, um, I probably could do with some more bolts in there as well when I get a new tap sorted out. Um, it, mostly that was just to stop the chips going up the side and create more mess everywhere. Uh, but it, it helped with a little bit of rigidity. I didn't need it, but I just it was just a thing for me that I felt, you know, um, won't hurt. Um, I was going to put some bellows across there, but we don't really get too much chips. We get dust up there, but not so much chips, etc. So I've not bothered with that. Put another panel at the back, obviously. Um, obviously, move the VFD up here so it doesn't get 
uh, any chips going into it anymore. It stays relatively clean out there, uh, just light dust which you can wipe off. Um, what else have we added? Um, I think that's it. We've got um, limit switches to add. I've got fed up of when it does have a hissy fit, you know, if I shove a fob in the computer well, at the same time as I'm moving X or Y on the uh, panel it can have a hissy fit and carry on going so I've now bought a uh, set of limit switches which I've got to go in soon. I did notice in this hot weather that when you're doing some carving it, the small water tank I've got on for the coolant gets very very hot um, so that's an absolute pain so I'm going to fit um, a radiator system that gets in a you know, game PC. I think that's going to be the better option now. I'll just be able to mount that to the back of the panel here. So it'll just go on here and move with the, uh, the, the y-axis there, so with that beam, so that's fine. Um, there's our blower for the, uh, the one in the front is the one for the uh, air supply to the spindle, and the one behind the bigger one is the uh, 1.5 kilowatt fan for the back bed, which is just installed with a very basic plumbing system. Uh, and it works extremely well for holding down thin, thin sheet material. You know, if I'm cutting into acrylic or cutting into the uh, aluminium, uh, you know, it's an absolute godsend uh, because it holds it uh, immensely flat all the time. Whereas, uh, as you know, if you um, if you try and screw it down the corners, it can bow in the middle. It never cuts properly. So this was a worthwhile investment. I wasn't sure how it all worked, so while I did the learning curve of it, I just used some very basic plastic to um, do the underneath part, uh, which is on top of the original MDF bed. Uh, it works fine, don't get me wrong, it, you know, uh, with the MDF cover on it's absolutely brilliant, I will seal the edges, um, but uh, maybe in future it probably could do with something slightly more heavy duty, um, you know, maybe some aluminium or a heavier grade industrial plastic, I don't know, but at some point I'll get back onto that. Um, I think that's it on the machine. It obviously has a PC it comes with, uh, with Mac 3 loaded. There's no license fee, I can, there's no license I can see on the Mac 3, so I suspect they're just loading it and forking it as is, which is another little irritation. It should, you know, if they load a bit of software, it should come with an approved license. That's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's the machine. Uh, cost at the time was about three grand, give or take. Uh, it was the biggest one I could fit in at that time. I've got a bit more space now than I had then because I've cleared a few machines out we weren't using. But at that time, the workshop was so stuffed with uh, hand tools that I was using and, and you know, bench mounted tools. Um, this was the biggest one I could fit in. It's got an operating size of <clears throat> 870 by 830. I would have dearly loved a one meter at least width, uh, but it is what it is. Um, it's paid for itself for us within two months. I, you know, hands down, it was the easiest. Uh, you know, a lot of debate about getting it, should we, shouldn't we? Um, and it, it paid for itself so very, very quickly. It, funny enough, it wasn't as quick as me cutting them by hand. I could still cut and punch. Uh, sheet metal and if you see one of our other videos you'll see me doing it that's a very slow process and that video was very quick when I was getting into doing multiple parts you know one after another the difference is the I could never get it 100% accurate by hand there was always some human error and also um, it was limited on what I could you know chamfer a corner or where the holes could be punched based on the tools we had uh, or the overall shape and design and style of any part we made this machine opened us up to far more opportunities and far more products going forward as well. So in that regard, it's also um, extremely worthwhile. Um, so yes, the doubters who dislike, you know, the CNC snobs who seem to hate the, and love the branded names and hate any of these um, fairly industrial looking, very basic machines will still hate it. But at the end of the day, it, it does what CNC machines do. It's cuts material very accurately and very quickly and that is all you can ask of it. Um, yes it had some some gripes were they insurmountable? No. Uh, so on that basis for me it was well worth the effort. You have to decide uh, you know on, on your machine what you want 
uh, whether or not something like this is for you. But if you need a, a freestanding uh, machine, I think they do tabletop ones as well, but if you need a freestanding machine as we did, then certainly um, this is one you know well worth looking at uh, because you get a decent size uh, for how much you, you lay out. Uh, obviously, I would uh, perhaps, knowing a bit more now, I would negotiate better with the vendor, um, but I'm not sure you know, how inclined he was uh, to make too many changes you know, from the routine. So um, maybe there's other vendors now on the, on the channel that um, slightly better customer service for, for want of a, a phrase. Anyway, there you go. That's my review ebay.co.uk CNC machine I love it wish it was bigger but hey it is what it is uh, but it makes us money and that's the important thing thank you for watching